If you're connecting a lot of networks together, you're configuring a lot of different routers, you're building a big network, and you start looking at the way traffic is going into a router and trying to make a determination of where it goes, one of the most important things you'll need to know is what is the next hop. At the very end of the day, the router's only job is to receive a packet and pass it on to its next location. And if you're troubleshooting or you're building new network connections or you're just trying to get an understanding of how traffic is flowing through your network, that next hop is going to be an important part of that. The hop is when a packet passes through a router. That's the hop. It makes a hop through a router to get to its next destination. So the next hop is going to be from where we are in this router, what is the next place that packet should go? We generally have to configure routing tables or at least make our routers aware that there are other routers out there. And to be able to send traffic to those networks, we need to understand what's the next place this packet should go if it needs to get out to that next gateway. The router obviously doesn't need to know how to get everywhere in the world. It just needs to know how to get farther down the line. The next router is going to be responsible for getting it a little farther down the line. That way, if we're communicating on the, on the internet, we don't have to know every single router on the internet. We have to generally know what direction we send the packet, and then it's up to the next router down the line. We have no control over it at that point. It's really up to the routing tables and the protocols used in those routers to move the packets a little bit farther down the line. An important consideration when sending this traffic out over the network is you have to be mindful that there are no loops in the network. And unfortunately, we can create these loops accidentally by either manually configuring a router or not understanding the way the routers are configured. So a router might send packets to another router, which believes that the best route is back to the original router, which of course believes the next route is back to where it's sent at the first place. And these packets keep looping back and forth and back and forth. One way to avoid this is what we have built into IPv4 and into IPv6 is there's a little section in the headers of those protocols. In IPv4, it's called time to live. And in IPv6, it's called the hop count. The way that this works is our workstation sets the hop count when it first sends out that packet. Maybe it sets the hop count to 64, and it sends it out to the router so that it can get out to the internet. The first router sees this packet and decreases that number by 1. Now it's 63 and sends it off to the next router. That router decreases it by 1. Now it's down to 62, and so on. In this particular case, if a router started looping through the routers over and over and over again, it would rapidly decrease all the way down to 0. And if a router sees a packet coming through with the time to live set to 0 or the hop limit set to 0, it discards the packet. And at that point, we have to resend that traffic. But of course, if that loop still exists, it would simply drop the packet again. And we have to get our network administrators involved to find out why are we seeing so many of these time to lives marked down to 0. Generally, your router also sends a message back to the original station saying, time to live got all the way down to 0. Sorry, had to drop this off. And if you're looking at the network and you're doing an analysis of those packets, it will be very clear what is going on as we see all of these TTLs, these time to lives, always getting down into a 0 mark. But that means that at least our network remains up and running for all of the other traffic that needs to traverse it. And we don't have all of these packets looping around over and over for infinity. As we mentioned at the very basic level, your router receives traffic and it sends it to the next location. Your router always needs to know where is the next hop. It often determines this information automatically if you're using a dynamic routing protocol. Occasionally, you have to manually configure this. If you're using a static routing protocol, you configure where the next hop will be so that the router will know where to send this information. If you put in the incorrect next hop, Obviously, the traffic that needs to go out to that location is not going to get there. It's going to go absolutely the wrong direction. It may go to another router down the line that has no idea what to do with that traffic, and it simply drops it on the floor. That's not what we want either. One way to look at these next hops and how a router works is to really look at a routing table. So let's look at a topology of a network and understand how that relates to the routing tables we might be using. This is the network topology that I'm using inside of my network. And I grab part of the routing table that I have just on my computer. So you can get a feel 
for how the routes might flow in and out of my connection. This is the router that these particular routing tables come from. And there are three networks connected to this router. There is an EN0 for the Ethernet connection I have, which is the 192.168.1.0 network. There's another network up here called VMNet8. And it is the 172.16.230.0 network. And there's a VMNet1, which is the 172.16.253.0 network. And you can see the IP addresses associated with those connections going into the router. So the router has some IP addresses on these networks as well, the 231.1, the 1.3, and the 253.1. When traffic goes into the router, it has to make a decision about where to send traffic. And if we look at our routing table, we can start to see that. The, for instance, the default location, if nothing else applies in this particular routing table, the default is to send it out the 192.168.1.1, which is somewhere out here. It's actually at a different router that's out here that I'm not even listing as part of what we're doing. That's my next hop to the rest of the world. So if I need to communicate to Google, if I need to communicate to Yahoo, if I need to go out to Microsoft's website, I will always go out to 192.168.1.1. And my particular router knows that to get to that next hop, you go out the interface EN0, which is this one right here, which is exactly where that traffic would go. Let's say we need to communicate to 172.16.231.10, which would mean it's somewhere out here on this network that I've called VMNet8, which is a virtual network that I've got running in my environment. So if we look at 231.10, we can look through our routing table here, and it sees that if I'm going to 172.16.231 with a slash 24, well, that certainly applies to the .10 that I just mentioned. That gateway is going to be link 8. It's going to be that VMNet8. So my default route will be out the VMNet8 interface, and off it goes onto that local network. Network. That's a locally attached network. Generally, your routers automatically know about those locally attached networks. So that's how the router is going to work. It's going to see where the destination IP address is for that particular destination. It's going to simply go down its list of routes in its routing table find out where that route might be, and then send the traffic out the appropriate interface. At that point, it's up to the next routers down the line, like this one here, which has its own routing table, to figure out where that traffic needs to go, and then sends it on its way to Google, to Microsoft, to the other sites where that traffic is going. And then the entire process repeats itself to come all the way back into my local network.